Yeah, why okay. not? You're doing good, bro. <laughs> I'm good, right? All right. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. Yo, 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 Kansai Collective, live in the Kansai, it's your boy Zane, man. Right now, Asa, he's taking a break, but I got a lovely guest here. Lovely. Yes. I'm lovely. What's your name, brother? Uh, Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy, Jeremy oh. Blaustein for y'all. Oh, good. Now, uh, me and Jeremy have history together, but so I know his story, but I'm here to bring y'all the exclusive on Mr. Blaustein, you feel me? So one thing that is, you know, really eye-opening for me about you is that how long you've been out here because mm. uh, I would say people might stay here for like five years tops, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But you, how long have you been here? Well, you know, I'm going to blow your mind here now a little bit, okay? <laughs> You know, first of all, it hasn't been that long. I mean, there's okay. people, there's people have been out here a long, long time. Okay. But this will blow your mind here. Okay. First time I came out to Japan. Okay. The emperor. Ooh. Was the emperor of Japan f from a hundred years ago. The wow. same emperor that was the emperor of Japan a hundred years ago was the emperor when I was first out here. Does that blow your mind? Mind blown. Right? <laughs> I came out here. You know, uh, in the Showa era. Okay. I was out here Damn. in Showa, 1986. So let's get right into it. I haven't it. been here the whole time since then, but okay. that was the first time I came out. And Emperor Hirohito was the emperor then, you know, probably emperor since like the 20s, 1920s. Mm. So 100 years. Wow. That's who, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're always living around the history, but, um, and right now, Japan, I'm sure, is way different, right? Like, um, as far as learning the language, mm. right? You came here when there was no technology, yeah, it's true, bro. That's true, yeah. That's a big point, yeah. How did you how did you learn Japanese? I, know, I, was, I was listening to Ace's uh origin story, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> and I was thinking, man, you know, you're complaining about Shinosaka this, Shinosaka that. It's like you should hear how it was for me when I first came out here, you know? Okay, so you know, I was an exchange student to come to Kansai Gaidai, mm. which is in Hirakata in the Osaka Prefecture. Wow, okay. And uh, just to set the stage for you so you know a little bit what it was like, uh, when I was in college and I started studying Japanese, you know, there was no internet, obviously. This right, is like, you damn. know, 1985, something like that. So it's like 10 years before there's any internet, you know, something like that. And if you wanted to see printed material, just I'm just talking about seeing Japanese on a page. Okay. Right? You're gonna gotta you have to go to the library. Okay. You know, you're not gonna you can't go online and see all this stuff. So if you wanna see kanji, you wow. know yeah, in yeah. you know, in the flesh, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy, right, you know. Right. And I'm talking about like this is a low bar for, you know. So I remember we had some uh, Japanese exchange students in the dormitory I was uh, in in college at University of Iowa back then. They brought some magazines they had, you know, they had it in their luggage, and it was mind blowing. Just say, mm -hmm. wow, it's a Japanese magazine. So just wow. seeing that, you know, okay. you couldn't print Japanese. You couldn't, you know, printers wouldn't even print Japanese back then. Wow. Yeah, yeah they didn't know how to print Japanese. I had to buy like a, a five hundred dollar device from like Boston Dynamics or something to like a dongle to put on my printer just to print the shit. Okay. You know? Excuse wow. me, I like my French. No, nah, it's okay. So anyway, the first time I came to Japan, uh, I was at, I was coming to Kansai Gaidai in uh, Osaka, but I didn't know uh, Osaka, Tokyo. I had no idea, you know, distances or anything like that. This is how you get to there. Okay, so when you first were taking that plane over to Japan, what was in your mind? Oh my God, just... God, I, I, I'm not sure I can even put that back together. It's it's like going to the land of Oz. I mean, mm. you got no idea what you're getting into at all. Okay. Uh, and so talking about the different, you know, Tokyo to Osaka, there's no way, I mean, how do you even confirm back then, mm. you know, here's how you get from okay. Tokyo to Osaka. It's not like, uh, you know, you guys jumping on the internet and saying, you know, in Google in five seconds you find out how right, to get, right. you know, to this. It's like you'd have to write somebody a letter, like I mean, write them a letter. Wow. You know what I mean? Like that's what it was like. So I, um, so here's my story in brief. You know, I, I jumped on a plane. Okay. I thought, well, coming to Japan is coming to Japan. It's a little island, right? right. You know, I oh. mean, what's the big difference? So I arrive in Narita, uh, you know, in Tokyo, yes. in Tokyo Airport. Okay. But as I'm flying over, I'm sitting next to a, a, a Japanese girl. Japanese woman, a young woman. You okay. know, she's a twenty something like this, and you know, 
me, you know, so if you yeah. know me, you know. Yeah. Right? And so we're talking the whole flight, and uh, she mm-hmm. says, um, she speaks good enough English. I, I had two years of Japanese under my belt then, but totally useless. Right. <laughs> totally, completely useless. Um, so she says, so, you know, where are you going or where, you know, right, where, right. you know. And that's when it became clear that I, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I had to get to, I was going to arrive in the uh, late afternoon, maybe evening in, uh, in Tokyo. Right. And I had, uh, didn't know the first thing about how to get to Osaka. Right. And so anyway, long story short, she said, well, you can stay at my family's wow. home. Wow, wow. You know? And that's just like a piece of like Japanese yeah, hospitality. You know, that, so, right, exactly. So that, that's the thing you have to understand. So what, what was going on in my mind was like, I'm learning about Japan and like mm-hmm. how the difference is there. So anyway, so we, we arrive in Narita and her mom comes to pick her up. Right. They stick me in the back of their car wow. and I'm sitting there in the back, you know, like, I don't mean the back seat, I mean like the back, you know, like the back, the right, whatever right. the... The trunk? Yeah, like the trunk, you know, like the hatchback, whatever, like, and I'm like laid out there and I'm, as we drive down the highway, I'm looking uh, at the street signs, at the highway mm. signs, and it's blowing my mind, because yeah. like I said, if you want to see Japanese in the flesh, right. you know, written right. on something right. like that, and oh. I'd only seen a couple magazines, right. you know, or textbooks, and I'm looking at the highway signs, and it's blowing my mind, and I'm, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. You and know? people don't even <laughs> understand, right? He went when there was a time when there was not that many foreigners yeah, in Japan. That's true. He met someone on the plane yeah. that, you know, just kindly was like, yeah, you can stay at my house. You yeah. feel me? And now he's in the back of their car yeah. with people he doesn't know. That's right. In a place he has no idea about. That's right. Two years of Japanese right. under his belt and not. That's right. <laughs> and not and so, so we drive we drive to, to the apartment that they were living. Um, turns out she had a boyfriend, you know, oh. but she's living with her mom and dad. Okay. The father was a Buddhist priest. Wow. And we talked a little bit. He was into Damn. fishing, I remember, but That's I didn't cool. have enough Japanese to really wow. have deep conversations, right. but I, he was into fishing and, you know, obviously they fed me. Uh, they gave me a, you know, I, I, I slept in a futon, you know, on a wow. tatami mat for the okay. first time. And um, I'm sure they made me take a bath. And uh, that night I had a terrible, 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 terrible nightmare. The kind that like you wake up like in a cold sweat kind of nightmare. And it wasn't like monster nightmare. Mm. The nightmare was that I had been to Japan and it was all over and I was returned. I had to return home and I I couldn't remember what Mm. the experience was. So my nightmare was it's over, but it was just starting. Well, let me ask you, like, you know, you said seeing the kanji on billboards and stuff was cool. What... Like, what were you, like, super excited about? What was, like, yo, I'm... Because I was a kanji monster like you are, Zane. Oh, Zane. okay. Yeah. Wow, that's okay. What I was, that's what I was like. I was, you know, I was so into it. So how do, how do, you, how do you study kanji? How did you study kanji when you got yeah. here? Yeah, well, back then, you know, the way to study kanji was the... We used the, the, the classic Nelson's Dictionary, mm. you know? The Nelson's is a Japanese uh, a kanji dictionary, and you look up stuff by the, the radical, the kanji okay. radical, you know? And yeah. so you wow. got your Tehen, which is Rokuju oh, Yon 64, God. you know? And you got yeah. your, you know, Itohen 120, Ooh. you know? That's what I'm talking about, you know? So All right. number nine is, uh, you know, Nimben, you know? Mm. And so I still remember those because that's how you you, yeah. you, look, you looked it up and um, yeah we're very we're very lucky in this uh, yeah. day and age. Well, lucky and unlucky because you don't learn the mm. stuff the way I learned it. Yeah, you know? that's true. Okay, um, and like you said, like two years under under your belt. I came here with no yeah. Japanese, and I definitely think right um, coming here learning the language mm. is going to be so much better yeah. than uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know studying sure. overseas yeah. what yeah. what how what were yeah. the differences well like, you know first of all i got to say that like learning the language is learning the culture right. i mean you oh, learn the yeah, language yeah. you learn the culture right, to right. a certain extent i mean when you speak in japanese you are in a way uh how how can i put it like you know you're already within the the culture by just by speaking the language right, you know right. I mean, if you speak it properly, then you're paying attention to things that you didn't pay attention to in English, you know? Mm, you're paying attention right. to the relationship by you by conjugating the verbs correctly, mm, you know? Right. We talk about the, uh, you know, the uh, kureru, ageru, morao, yes, you know? Yes, yes, yes. The tehen verbs, you know? Okay. Te ageru, uh, te morao, te kureru. Okay. And that's because in Japanese, the, the verbs describe the relationship between people. Mm. So, you know? 
he made me drink. He gave me the honor of allowing me to drink or, you know, I, you know, and it's all these things built into the language. Okay. So like you are talking about more of like the honorific words. It's not honorific. No, that's not honorific. So I'm talking about, I'm talking about the fact that when you conjugate Mm, te, okay, right. When you conjugate a verb, you always put in the relationship of the verb action with other people. So I received something from another person. I gave something to another person or that person received it, mm-hmm. right? And so built into the language is this, is the relationship between people, you know? It's not simply, okay. you know, it's not simply uh, I drank, you know? I'd say that uh, uh, when I got a drink from this guy, which, you know, right, you right, see, right, got a little right, bit into right, me, right? right? No mas te cureta, uh, you know? So yeah, I received, yeah, the, I received yeah. the him forcing me to drink, you know? So, you know, this is beautiful and we could go super deep into yeah, this, we could but go on I think uh, you know, your love for the language shows what job you're in, man. Mm. What do you do out here, bro? I'm, a, I'm well, I'm a I'm a tran- I'm a reformed translator, you know? I'm a translator cuz I'm a, I've been a translator for 25 years. Okay. And um, I started a, a company translation company what is it what is it localization called? company we call it localization in the in the in the game industry okay uh, the company is dragon baby dragon, dragon baby. baby.com yeah named after my cat because oh, i looked wow. at her she looked like a little dragon baby okay garden her That's little beautiful. perch uh anyway so what we do is we ch- we uh we localize or translate video games all right well let me like let's clear the air because i'm sure people think translating right from english to japanese mm. is like hello Konnichiwa. Japanese to English in my case, oh, you know, as a, a personally, as a personal uh-huh. translator, you know, I never recommend, uh, you know, it's a rule of thumb that you don't translate into something, you only translate into your mother tongue. Wow. And so people are going to tell you, yeah, I do English to Japanese, I do Japanese to English. No, you don't. Mm. I'm sorry, you know, unless you're a unicorn, mm. and there are some unicorns, but they're as rare as unicorns. You're not translating, you're not a... You're not a native English speaker wow. translating into English, Japanese. I'm not going to hire you to translate wow. into Japanese. I'm sorry, but okay. that's the way it is. That's the reality, you know. So, can you get? Can you give like? A, is there any words that you have on you right now that is like, huh. you know, hard to translate in to sure. English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Can you give me an example? Well, how about sasuga? Sasuga. Oh, yeah. okay. Sasuga. Damn. Okay. Yeah. So Sasuga, what is? I know what that means, but you know, you, you know the kanji for Sasuga, don't you? It's a I very do. I think yeah. it's uh, Nagareru yeah. and Ishi. Yeah, that's right. right Nagareru so. Ishi. So a flowing rock, you okay. know, Sasuga. But when you say Sasuga, it's a word that means, um, yeah. So I'm having trouble translating it, right? Yeah. Because you say it when uh, you have the expectation that some that someone is. Uh, good or potentially good at something and then they confirm it through their actions mm. so you say ah sasuga yeah you know? see um that's <laughs> the thing you know why living in another country and learning like japanese for example you can't really get the yeah. full and you understanding can't look that up on the dictionary the yeah. dictionary is not going to tell you what you need to know about it. it's not going to tell you how people use it and so you know what i say to people is you know um First of all, dispel the idea that you can speak your language and then translate it. It's really, translation is not really an act of taking your words and putting them into Japanese Uh, words. If it was that simple, you know, like I know some people who make that mistake. Mm. And unfortunately, it hinders their ability to learn, you know, because they can't get free of the idea that all I got to do is put this stuff Mm. into another language. It's not like that. It's like you have to, you have to have good ears and listen to how people all right. Talk and in the what situations and what circumstances yeah. they use what phrase and the nuances of that and you know okay the way they curl up at the end of the sentence and you gotta <laughs> you have a good ear like for like a music and you yeah. gotta copy that at first you know be a parrot you know mm. and uh, listen in detail and okay so with all that being said um, I know your story but what games have you translated brother. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah, don't uh, be shy right, either. Right, be right, 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 right. Show, show, right. show your true colors. All right, all right, right. I, um, uh, all right. Uh, so you probably all know Metal, Metal Gear Solid. Ooh. Yeah. So I did the original Metal Gear Solid, which, 
from English to Japanese. Uh, I was living uh, in Western Mass at the mm. time. It took me six months to translate it. I translated the entire thing. Now, maybe some people don't know what system Metal Gear came out on. Came what out, system yeah, came did? Out, uh, came out on the PS One. Okay, PS One. Yeah, it came out on the PS One. You know. Okay, tell New me generation what, stuff. You know. What 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 was like the trials and tribulations? Like what what yeah, did you well, go through making Metal yeah. Gear Solid into English? You know, these days, uh, translation game translation projects are you know nobody's got time to have one person do it. Mm. So it's like they're gonna have a team of three, four, an editor doing it. But um, you know, I was translating at a time. We had just switched over from like you know Super Nintendo and oh, Sega okay, okay. to CD-ROMs, you know, mm. which had so much data right. capacity, and okay. so you know, it's like all this voice and all this data, and so um, nobody was doing it. There was no word localizer. There was no uh, kids coming over from Japan all into manga and stuff like right. that. You know, oh, I was working wow. at Konami for a couple of years in Tokyo, okay. and I left that after I had a baby. Uh. This is short version left it went back to the states to be a good papa and started translating uh got a few jobs um from konami you know uh sui koden and uh i did uh castlevania symphony night what is a man a miserable little pile of secrets so what was difficult translating like for in metal gear solid like what what were some yeah, problems very, that you very, ran into so the uh, director kojima uh, he wanted to make it very real, realistic, so he did a lot of research into wow. uh, Cold War stuff and nuclear wow. weapon stuff and wow. military jargon and stuff like that. But the thing was that, you know, in Japan, they don't ha they're not tricked out with all that military jargon and right, stuff like right. that. But I knew uh, what he was going for. He okay. was trying to make it real, real, okay. real. Okay. But Japanese don't know military like Americans. Mm -hmm. And so I got to present this to an American audience. Wow, and wow. furthermore, it was, it was kind of like 007 spy-ish, wow. you know, like... Navy SEALs and stuff mm -hmm. like that and so I knew what he was going for but like I had to I had a harder hurdle than he did because Japanese don't know from that right. stuff but Americans wow. have a higher demand for the real the re realisticness so, so going back to what you were talking about having yeah. no technology but yeah. you had to yeah. go yeah. into right. you know finding yeah. out all these different military right. stuff yeah. how did you how did you go about yeah. that yeah so um, I uh, you know, I, I needed to be able to do dialogue and military style dialogue, you know, so I, I read a bunch of um, novels by this guy, Marchinko, who was this uh, Navy, SEAL Team 6, this guy, this gung-ho guy, he'd written all these books. Oh. He was in SEAL Team 6, okay. the original, and he'd written all these, you know, novels of that, and it's got a lot of back and forth military jargon, and so I acquainted myself with how military guys, you know, in a special ops talk mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and then I just... The internet did exist then, okay. you know, um, and so, right, right, um, right, right. but still I'm flipping back and forth in the Conjure Dictionary right. and the Nelson's Dictionary oh and God. doing all the hard work and, uh, um, but you know, it was a, it was, um, is a gift really to, to get to do it by yourself because you don't have to, wow. I had six months to do it, which wow. is a short time and a long time. You At know? that time, did you know how big Metal no, Gear was going to no, be? No, 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 no. The only thing that Kojima had done back then was um, Snatcher, okay. you know, and uh, like well, he had done, you know, he had done Metal Gear for like mm -hmm. the Super Nintendo, but it wasn't big. Wow. So no, nobody, nobody knew. Kojima didn't know. Wow. Nobody knew. Okay. Um, so anyway, I, I crafted this thing. I, I killed it. You know, I put like every. Killed it. Yes. I killed it. I had every. I played that game too, man. I mean, I put, I, I put what a lot I of soul yeah. into it. I put a lot of. Unfortunately, I didn't prearrange the payment schedule. And so my six months translating was six months payment free. Oh. Plus two for the. <laughs> you know, you invoice them and then wow. two months later, maybe you get some money. So we're talking six, eight months. Uh, two little children. Wow. Western Massachusetts. Wood stove, no money, stressing out, super stressing out, kids crying while I'm tapping wow. away. But um, yeah, we I finished that and then right away they did the, the voiceovers in L.A. And so I went to L.A. to uh, wow. be an assistant director on it because I had written the whole, the whole script, the whole dialogue. I knew the stuff back and forth. I knew what it's supposed to sound like and get there. We, we uh, auditioned that. You know, the actors were decided, but we had to set their voices and, um, you know. So I was That's instrumental in that. Beautiful, bro. Yeah. I mean, guys, this is only 
guys, this is really only one game that he's That's one done. Game, yeah. You know, he's he's done so many games, yeah, I've done a lot. but. You know, this could keep going on forever. I just want to say, you you live Look now. It up. You can Google. You can Google. You can yeah, Google Jeremy Blaustein. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Now, you you. How long have you been living in the Kansai I've area? Here, uh, I've been here eleven years this time since I moved back. Okay, where yeah. do you live? I live in uh, the Princess Path, Himeji. Princess <laughs> Path, Himeji. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta make a slight complaint about. Uh, Right, the Kansai Collective here. Okay, okay what's you up? Know? What's your what's well, your complaint? I got complaint? a beef with you guys. You know, you're listing the places in Kansai, uh, and you're sleeping on Himeji. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Okay, nah, that's true, I'm man. Here to represent uh, Himeji, please. <laughs> okay, give us one cool thing about Himeji. Himeji, the castle, man. Yes. The castle. Okay, it's what, the greatest castle in all of Japan. If you want to see a Japanese castle, forget Osaka Castle, man. Right. Forget about that stuff. I hear it's you a on gift that. shop. Right. Okay, that right. place is a gift shop. It's a hollowed out gift shop. Okay. No offense to uh, to Osaka. Right. Uh, residents i love osaka right. but you know the castle it's fake man mm. himeji castle this was built at the height of the feudal japanese castle building technology man okay. it's tricked out with every wow. defensive thing you wow. can you can put in there wow. and it was never assaulted right right and That's... it doesn't just have the main building which most places only have the main building it's got the princesses you know quarters mm. it's got you know all these little uh, buildings associated with it, you know, it's got warehouses and storehouses and wells and, you know, haunted wells and, wow. you know, it's just something to see and you can really get a feel, you know, when you walk up there from the Himeji station and you walk up Otemai Dori mm. and you see the castle right as you step out of the, right, that's uh, a fact. the, the station, you know, and you see this thing looming up there, you're right back there in the 18th century, you know, wow. 17th century looking at, you know, and you can imagine what it'd be like to assault this mother, you know? Okay, so you've been in uh, the Kansai area and you've also been in the Kanto area, like around Tokyo and all that. Um, what do you love about the Kansai area? Well, you know, I think that the thing I love about it is that, um, you know, everybody knows that Japan's a very insular, you right. know, place, right. you know? It's in-group, out-group kind mm. of place. Am I talking? I'm getting to sing, okay? Yeah, you're good, bro. Um, so the thing about Kansai, and you guys touched upon it um, in the last episode, you know. I don't want to say last episode, second episode. I think you were talking about Kansai Ben, mm, Kansai dialect, you know. Right. So for me, you know, it's hard for a foreigner to get on the inside, you know. And it is, you know. Every time you step out that door, you're a foreigner, mm. you know. However, however, if you've been in Kansai for a long time and your Kansai Ben is... It's popping like mine is. Right, right, right. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's very good. In fact, we we don't even speak Kansai Ben. We speak Banshu Ben. Okay. Which is uh, <laughs> right. Banshu Ben. You know, Harima or, you know, it used to be called Banshu or the, mm. the, the, the Hyogo Prefecture, this area, you know, right. Kobe and stuff like this. It's called Harima now. It used to be called Banshu. Mm. So we like to say we speak Banshu Ben, which is a, a form of Kansai Ben. Right. It's Kansai, it's Kansai dialect, but right. it's, it's Banshu. Yeah, dialect. much deeper. Yeah, it's dirty. Area. It's yeah. dirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so if you speak this, you know, you're still a foreigner, but when you drop the right words, when you drop the right phrase, mm. they know that you're not just a foreigner. You're, yeah, you, you know, let them know. Yeah, you're, you know, you're, you've been here for a mm. while, you know, so they can't sleep on you, you know, yeah. if you, you know, and there's levels, yeah. you know, there's levels too, you Supreme know. Supreme levels. <laughs> there's a lot of levels. Damn. Yeah. That's beautiful, bro. Yeah. Look. We could keep going. Yeah, it's a and beautiful and yeah. conversation. I've learned things about this man that, you know, I've known him for at why least five, how, six why years. Why don't you say how we know each other? Yeah, man, we do karate together. He introduced me to karate, mm. uh, and karate is a big passion of mine. Um, but, yeah, this journey is definitely going to continue. Uh, what do you have to say to people who want to come to Japan? Mm. What What... What do you, yeah? What do you want to share? That wisdom that you got, mm. twenty five years. Wow, man, that's that's a that's a heavy uh, that's a heavy question. Just give them. I would yeah. say, look, you know, first of all, it takes a lot of energy to break out of your right. atmosphere. Mm. You know, if you're in the states or if you're in England or wherever you are, Denmark. You know, people come to Japan from all over. First of all, Japan is an international country you know people like to think you know it's all it's all japanese and stuff it you know it's true but it's not true you know people come here from all over mm -hmm. so my my advice is 
it's going to take some uh, some rocket fuel to get out of your uh, your orbit. Right, right. Right. And maybe you're going to come to like you asked me how long I've been in Japan. This time I've been here eleven years, but to come here for the long haul, it's not going to be the first time you come here you know you're gonna come here you're gonna be forced visa is gonna force you home mm. and then it's gonna be like oh sh- oh shit i'm back you know I, but, and for me it was like i gotta get back to japan so i scrambled and i scrambled mm. whatever i gotta do i gotta mm. get back to japan mm. and i never let that go and you know that's what you know that's what it's gonna take i mean you're gonna come here once you know you people that are all into japan you're gonna come here once and you're gonna have your whether you come as a tourist three months or six months if you're European, you know, or you get a year job and you teach in English and you teach for a year, or you teach for two years, but you only get that English language teacher experience and you're in a, an apartment somewhere, you know. How are you going to break out of that? Because that's a hard hole to get out of too, you know. Yeah, I mean, it is. And so you got to be dedicated to it. I'm going to make it because you're not going to starve. That's what I would say. Japan's not going to let you starve, but it's going to take a lot of effort to get so if you're really into it, you know, don't give up on that. When you're forced to go back to wherever you came from and you really want to make it, there's levels and levels of knowing Japan. And so don't give up. Scramble. Do whatever you got to do. Come back here. Experience it again. Experience it for the second time and the third time. And your whole experience is going to deepen. And learn that language well look yeah. at that man from the translator himself yeah. jeremy blaustein man do not ever give up and you all better not give up on the kansai collective because we just flourish and come baby. to himeji you know come to himeji and stay in himeji none of this uh one day trip stuff coming from <laughs> kyoto okay you come to himeji you stay in himeji we got the, okay we got the castle we got all a right. zoo we Thank got you. a safari if we don't park. stop this you'll never stop <laughs> peace